Hey everyone, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here, and today I'm asking a very interesting question. What would it take to unseat Google as the largest search provider on the planet? This is interesting, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this. Many sources are reporting on this, but the originating source that stemmed many of the other reports is actually a site called Koi Wolf News that covers new technology uh, and basically beyond. And I did my homework on this, and this seems like a very interesting proposition. And their logic is something that I actually can, can kind of get behind. Now, here's what's going on. Google is undoubtedly the most popular search engine in the world. I don't care if you're on Windows or a Mac, if you're on Android or Apple iOS, meaning iPhone and iPad, they are the leader hands down. Nobody is going to dispute that. But will they always be that? And that's the question. Because Apple doesn't think so, and here's what's going on. Now, for several years, it's been reported that Google pays billions of dollars to Apple to basically remain the default search engine on Safari, their web browser, or iOS, which basically is, uh, you know, iPhone, iPad, as well as Mac OS, which is the operating system for their MacBooks and, and their actual computers. This deal between Google and Apple ensures that iPhone, iPad, and Mac users essentially by default are using the Google search engine when they use products like Safari, also an Apple product. That is, unless they manually change their default search engine to whatever their preference is. So for example, some people prefer the more secure or more private rather DuckDuckGo or StartPage or some others or Bing or Yahoo for the three of you that do that uh, over Google, you have that ability. But by default, if you're in Apple's ecosystem, you are going to Google. And so this deal, though, between Apple and Google may actually be coming to an end shortly. In July of 2020, Reuters reported that the United Kingdom UK Competition and Markets Authority was taking aim at their deal. And so here's why Apple may be actually launching their own search engine to compete with Google and can they upset them? You tell me. But here, here are all the points that were made by Cole, Coy Wolf, and I think these are very interesting. So point number one, regulatory pressure. They have a contentious relationship with Google, and the maturation of Apple's Siri and iCloud are presenting an opportunity for Apple to create and launch their own search engine. There are several signs right now that indicate Apple may be doing this. Point number two, Apple doesn't actually need Google's money, and I think this is a really good point, because Apple is now the world's most valuable company. They have a market cap of something like $2 trillion at this point, and so while they may want Google's money, they don't necessarily need it, which gives them the flexibility to try and compete with Google. Apple, point number three, is also pouring research into, uh, or basically pouring resources and money, excuse me, into research of a search engine. Apple is investing heavily in search as shown in their job postings for search engineers. The job listings reveal they incorporate AI, ML, NLP, and more into all of their services and apps, which means if Google is on a hiring spree for search engine technology, uh, people, you know, rather people that are capable in developing search engine technology, that is a really good indicator. Point number four, iOS and iPad OS 14, so that's iPhone and, uh, and, and iPad, uh, the 14 beta, actually bypasses Google Search with Apple's integrated Spotlight Search. Now, it's not clear if Apple uses Bing anymore as results are labeled only as Siri suggestions. Um, it is clear, though, that Apple has started to return search results within Spotlight Search, and it is completely bypassing Google altogether in the latest iteration of its operating system soon to be out. That is a massive indicator, I think. At point number five, Apple recently updated its AppleBot web crawler page. AppleBot obviously goes through and starts looking and indexing pages like any web crawler bot would. In July 2020, Apple published a significant update to its About Apple support page 
Um, the additions are very similar to the details that Google provides to webmasters and search engine optimization firms. This indicates their positioning to be similar to Google's Google search. And the final point that is made here is that Applebot has actually been rather busy crawling sites. And Koi Wolf mentions that they checked their server logs on their WordPress engine, and that which revealed that Applebot had actually been regularly crawling their site daily, something they hadn't noticed in their logs until very recently, meaning Apple is basically spending money to turn up the infrastructure and search engine capability of their Applebot web crawler page, which may directly translate into this. So Apple may be coming out with their own proprietary search engine in the way Microsoft did with Bing to compete with Google, although I think six people use Bing uh, comparatively, although it is the integrated default search feature of Windows 10, if I recall. If I, I believe I had to change that to my own personal preference regarding that, but that's a huge thing. Now, Apple, I think, has been hit or miss with uh, in the past when competing with Google products. This is outside of the reporting of Koi Wolf and others. And we can look at Apple Maps for that. Google Maps is light years ahead of where Apple Maps was when Apple Maps was originally released. And I actually mentioned this in a, in a recent video and podcast. I think I had a, a thing where it said, OK, you can, you know, it's like a 10 mile trip. And it took me from like Chicago to northern Canada back to Chicago to get there. They've obviously honed Apple Maps since then and are continuously improving on that. But it'll be very interesting to see what the search engine results are from a Google search or excuse me, an Apple search engine, as well as that ability that that Google in this is their secret sauce really tailors that if you are in the Google inf uh, like infrastructure and their ecosystem and I search on something, the results get tailored to me because their AI is so good at understanding what I search and what I clink, uh, click on to get to. That's going to be the real indicator here. So while anybody can, let's say, basically create a search engine, getting the tailored search bubble to Apple users may be one of those things that separates them from, let's say, the more private browsers like a DuckDuckGo or a StartPage and all of that, both of which I really love. My default is DuckDuckGo and StartPage, uh, you know, for the record, because I try to see what the results are outside of the of the ecosystem from Google. But I do admit, I occasionally will go to Google search and search on things if I'm looking for very specific information, since Google has so much on me. Apple could be positioning to do that themselves. And I would also be curious to see how they're going to integrate that search into the data they're collecting by iPhone users. For example, I don't use an iPhone in my in my regular life. I'm an Android person, but if I started using Apple Search, does that mean that my results, for example, are less effective because the they don't know what apps I'm installing and all of that in my Android because I'm not in the Apple ecosystem? I'd be curious to see what happens with this, and I think there's a lot of different things that can go on, but Apple, given the vast amount of wealth that they have created over the last couple of years, could genuinely, genuinely, above and beyond anybody else that has released a search engine, give Google a run for its money. And that is something that will be very interesting to see in the next year or two. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Can Apple upset Google in terms of search? I'd love to know. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, everyone.